Okay. <laughs> All right. Don't look at me. <laughs> <laughs> It was the this. night before yeah. Christmas. Put your nose back on. What are you doing? <laughs> I can't do this. <laughs> Hi, Yarnabees. It's me, Crochet B, with uh, a special Tales from the Carpet Trail. So over the next three days, we're going to be giving you videos that are all uh, Christmas themed. And uh, basically how this came about is when I started my business, uh, years ago, I joined a networking group and uh, we would have to get up every uh, meeting and give a little uh, little spiel or a little jingle. And then at Christmas time, uh, we would all try to do a Christmas themed um, song or poem or something uh, to do with Christmas, to do with our business. So um, I, w I always won every year. It was a competition between myself and the chiropractor in the group and he always wanted to challenge me and then people would vote and I would win year after year after year so the poor guy eventually just gave up um, so you'll see so uh, that'll be coming we're going to do um, a three different uh, Tales from the Carpet Trail Christmas videos um, three days in a row probably Monday Tuesday Wednesday for you guys uh, leading up to Christmas so um, meanwhile on the carpet trail uh, 2020 was obviously a uh, very, very different year uh, than normal. Like all of us, it definitely uh, affected business and life and everything else. Um, but we did get, uh, we got through it, I think, in reasonably good shape. Three of my competitors did go out of business because um, it was pretty slow there for a while. So luckily we were able to weather the storm. But uh, something happened the other day that I thought was interesting I'd tell you about. And this is not the first time this has happened. Um, you know... Uh, you're doing something right when somebody who either works for one of your competitors or one of your competitors themselves actually calls you to uh, to come and clean their carpets. And that's kind of what happened. So um, a few years ago, the fellow that was the owner of uh, the largest um, franchise carpet cleaning business in our area, um, one of the ones that actually went under this year, um, there was a, a young gal living in his basement, uh, renting his basement suite. And uh, I got a phone call from her. She was all crying and upset. Um, and I go, what's wrong? She goes, well, I'm moving out and uh, I have a, a large room of carpet that I need to be cleaned. And there's a lot of stains and everything. And I already had another carpet cleaning business over here. They weren't able to get the stains out. So I don't know what I'm going to do. Um, so... I said, well, um, I can come over and, and do my best. And if I can get it all good for you, then you can pay me. And um, if not, then um, no harm, no foul. I'm willing to give it a shot. So she said, really? Yep. So I go over and, you know, it's a disaster. Like every stain in the world you could imagine on this carpet. And, I, you know, you look at it, you go, what, what, what the hell happened here? And she looks at you and says, well, I have a two-year-old. So, like, this is the blanket explanation. I have a two-year-old. This is why the place looks like this. So, I guess, I don't know, I'm a little old-fashioned, but I guess the modern guy's supposed to go, oh, okay, well, that totally explains it. It's certainly not your fault or anything, but whatever. So, I got to work, and it was tough, and I had to get on my hands and knees and scrub and work and whatever. And it actually, I spent about two hours on this, this one big sort of living room, dining room thing. And I got it all really good and everything. And then um, she was like, holy smokes, like um, my landlord uh, owns this company and uh, he had his guys here and they weren't able to do this. I says, well, go up and get him. So she went up and she got this guy. Now this fellow is a businessman in our town and he's uh, uh, most famous for, he owns one of the most popular restaurants in Nanaimo that a lot of people go to and they've even been featured on the Food Network because they have this uh, ridiculous uh, hamburger called the Mountain Burger. And it's a thing that if you're able to actually eat this thing in, in one sitting that you'll get a, a picture of yourself and you're on kind of the wall of fame. And I actually did try it once and I generally it was a pretty big eater, but I could not eat this thing. So it was on an episode of Man Versus Food and that fellow came and he actually was able to 
conquer the mountain burger. So anyway, it's a bit of an iconic spot. But this fellow uh, bought this franchise. He had never been in the carpet cleaning business. He had never cleaned any carpets. He's just a businessman uh, making an investment. So we bought this business, hired a guy to run it. And they're out there with four or five vehicles and uh, lots of money, lots of expense. And they're very high end and they charge people a lot of money uh, to come and do the job. But their technicians generally are younger, don't have a lot of experience. And like a lot of uh, millennial folks aren't willing to get their hands real dirty and get really in there and work hard. So anyway, he came down and he looked at this and he was like, uh, holy smokes, I, I can't believe it. Like my guys were here and uh, they, they weren't able to get any of these things out. And I said, well, how long did they spend? He says, oh, they were here for like, you know, a good 30 minutes. And I said, well, I, I've been here for two hours. And he's like, oh. And I said, you're the owner of the company, right? And he says, yeah. And I said, well, don't you think your guys would have spent a little more time and a little extra effort and gone the extra mile for the owner of the business? And he's kind of like, yeah. And then I said, and I said, you're the owner of Mrs. I'll say the name, Mrs. Richie's restaurant in Nanaimo, right? And he says, yeah. And I said, I love your restaurant. I eat there all the time. He says, oh, thanks very much. And I said, yeah, you have the dirtiest restaurant carpets in Nanaimo. And he says, what? I said, you have the dirtiest restaurant carpets in Nanaimo. I said, you own a carpet cleaning business. Don't you think you should have your guys in to clean your carpets once in a while? And he's like, yeah. I says, in fact, wouldn't that be really good training to get them to clean your restaurant before you send them out and, you know, charge people a lot of money to clean their carpets? And he's like, yeah. So then he asked me if I had a car. And so I gave him one of my fridge magnets that I put on every fridge. Um, so for years afterwards, my magnet was actually on his fridge and he would call me to come and clean his own house, even though he owned the largest carpet cleaning franchise in Nanaimo. That's a true story. And then there's another company in town um, and I would get calls over the years, uh, mostly from the, empl the employees. So this woman, um, is the type of carpet cleaner that I don't really like a lot. They, um, she hires people to telephone solicit and uh, cold call and tell people like we just happen to be in the neighborhood and uh, all of that. And the kind of, you know, I like to advertise if people want me, have them call me, I'll go, I'll do the job, but I don't like to bug people otherwise. So she's had this business for many years. She also uses a method that's different than mine where she doesn't, uh, doesn't use, uh, a lot of water. She has a, a rotating disc machine, so they'll spray all this stuff all over the carpet and they'll use this thing and it basically just kind of does this and sort of smudges the dirt everywhere and and uh, doesn't look all that great, but she's able to get away with it and people pay her and she's had a lot of complaints and stuff, but she just moves on to the next one. So um, not the kind of business that I, I would like to have or be part of. And I've had many of her employees over the years actually call me to come and clean for them when they're moving out or if they need a carpet cleaner. They always go, well, you work for this lady. Oh, we, oh, I don't want her to clean my own carpets. So they're on the phone every day trying to talk you or the public into having her boss come and clean the carpets, but um, they don't want their actual carpets cleaned by their boss. So... So I always thought that was a little funny. And then lo and behold, a couple of days ago, I get a phone call and it's this actual lady that owns this company calling me to come and clean her own personal home. So I went there. I was kind of wondering if she was going to um, pretend that, you know, she wasn't, that I didn't know who she was. I don't know if she knew, if I knew who she was or not, but she introduced herself, told me right away who she was. And, and I said, well, why? Why are you getting me to do this? You own your own business. Oh, I don't want to clean my own. And I actually cleaned the carpets of uh, one of my competitors who's been in town for 30 some years. And she got me to come and do the carpets for her. So guess that must mean that I'm doing something right. If you, the other carpet cleaners that own franchises and businesses call me to come and clean their own personal home. So I guess I'm kind of the carpet cleaner's carpet cleaner. So anyway, I um, want to wish everybody 
uh, the merriest of Christmas. Uh, watch for my three Christmas themed videos. Uh, I'll try to have Sandy in them. But we tried to film one already and she couldn't stop giggling and ruin the whole thing. So she's been out there uh, calming herself down. So that hopefully we can get through these things without her um, bloopering the hell out of everything. So anyway, watch for them. I wish everybody a Merry Christmas and all the best in 2021. Uh, thank you for supporting Sandy and and Crochet A and everything that she does. And, you know, she loves and really appreciates all you guys. And uh, we'll talk to you soon. Okay, guys. Bye-bye. <laughs>